Hello, my name is Simon Rabinowitz, and I'm going to give you a presentation of how to do a physical examination in a child. Uh, the video is uh, associated with the article, Abdominal Examination on E-Medicine, and if you somehow have arrived at the video without the benefit of the article, uh, that would be a good uh, place to supplement uh, what you're seeing. To start off with, um, I'll just speak for a few minutes before we bring the children in, uh, it's important to understand that a physical examination is a routine part of all examination, but it becomes a focus um, if there's a specific complaint, such as abdominal pain, such as an abdominal mass, such as an enlargement of the liver or the spleen, um, such as a, uh, uh, an evaluation of a abdominal trauma or after an operation. However, the crucial part of physical examination um, is when there's some type of a surgical problem because a good physical examination uh, can possibly be life-saving. So it would be important uh, with regard to an obstruction, uh, a perforation, uh, some type of a uh, sepsis. Uh, in kids, we also think about interception, bobulus, and of course, uh, appendicitis. When one does a physical examination, there's a sequence that one follows. We begin by taking a look at the child, um, and then we go ahead and uh, do uh, auscultation, uh, followed by uh, palpation and percussion. Uh, it's important, prior to the actual performance of the examination, uh, to have two things. One is to have in your own mind, as the examiner, exactly what it is that you think you might be looking for. Uh, again, it's uh, of supreme importance is to understand if you think, based on your history, that this might be an emergency situation. Um, otherwise, based on your history, you should have a good idea of what the uh, chief complaint uh, is leading you towards uh, and what would be the physical findings that could uh, support it. Uh, and the second, which uh, is especially important with the child or any other uncooperative patient, uh, is the preparation of the child uh, himself or herself. Uh, the examiner must be calm. He must uh, provide, or she, must provide uh, a level of confidence to the child. Uh, they must be empathetic. And oftentimes, uh, despite all of your best efforts, uh, the child uh, is going to be unhappy with the examination. Uh, and in order to get the most out of it, uh, one needs to, to oftentimes distract the child uh, with age-appropriate questions uh, which can occupy their attention uh, and allow the examination to be performed. So now we'll bring in our children um, in terms of complete transparency. These are not uh, actual patients, but the children of a colleague of mine. 